This is the fifth estate winning headlines, your media police post coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya. On this show, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 24th of June and I am AX. I am Miss Pope. And I am GK. In case you missed the headlines, here they are. Mm. The Daily Nation, under siege. The Standard, what new IEBC numbers reveal. Okay. The Star, Raila Ruto close ranks in IEBC voter roll row. Mm -hmm. And The People Daily, voter numbers signal tight race. Mm -hmm. So before we venture into the headlines today, Miss mm -hmm. uh, Pope, why don't you kick us off with what you have to say today? Okay, so today I would like to talk about strategy and tactics in politics. Mm. What is the difference between the two? And is either sufficient or does one need both um, to win a presidential election? Mm. To win any war, uh -huh. both strategy and tactics are equally important. Absolutely. Okay. Allow me to make the distinction with a short story. <laughs> there was once a mother with two orange Mm -hmm. to feed three children. Uh -huh. Only one of the children was hers. Mm -hmm. The others were neighbors. Mm -hmm. To favor her child and make the others feel special, she employed this strategy. Mm -hmm. She gave each of the neighbor's children an orange and gave her child nothing. Mm -hmm. Then she asked the two to each share their orange with her child. In the end, her child got two halves or a full orange. Oh, the smart. mother, <laughs> yeah. So the mother used strategy to make sure she gave um, the children something, but tactics to ensure that her child got a whole orange. Big brain time. Yep. So strategy, strategy is the bird's eye view of any plan, mm -hmm. the action one takes to achieve an end goal. Mm. Tactics, on the other hand, are concrete, distinct steps or actions one implements to attain what is outlined in their strategy. Mm -hmm. Simply put, tactical planning is the act of breaking down a strategic plan into short-term actions. Okay. Mm -hmm. A strategy, for instance, would be outlining the objectives of your manifesto, mm -hmm. your 10-point agenda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tactics, on the other hand, would be the actions you take to implement that manifesto. Okay. Mm -hmm. For example, um, solutions that change policy and streamline government service delivery. Mm -hmm. So the question is, have the presidential candidates been able to display these techniques and more so, have they been successful? Mm -hmm. I ask this because William Ruto's support has been steadily declining according to recent polls, yeah. Yeah. while yeah. Raila Odinga has been progressively gaining ground. Absolutely. The trajectory and impact of the candidates has clearly changed and so the question then becomes, which candidate is working the political field better? Mm. Is it strategic or tactical for a whole deputy president to go on the interwebs <laughs> to complain about the high cost of unga, the current state of living and other short stories, mm. forgetting that this is the very same government that he's in? Mm -hmm. <laughs> One can see the strategy um, Uda employed um, in choosing a Gemma running mate. Mm. They thought that this was the ticket that they would best seduce the mountain. Mm. Secure the base. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But is Rigadi the journal rocking the boat from within? Ooh. In our view, Ruto did not take sufficient time to study Gemma. Mm. His strategy was right. He knew that to win the election, he needed the Gemma vote. Mm -hmm. But his tactics were all wrong. You cannot just pick a Nikikuyu. Mm -hmm. You must pick a Mudamaki or a Jaba mm -hmm. like Martha. Mm -hmm. Oda is also self-cannibalizing with smaller gamer parties complaining that they are being sidelined. Mm. In simple terms, Ruto is forcing stronger popular gamer candidates to stand down for weaker candidates that he can control. Is this tactical in winning the Gemma vote? Mm. Or will it fail? Yeah. According to Sansu, strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. Mm -hmm. And tactics without strategy mm. is the noise before defeat. Mm -hmm. Is it too late for William Ruto to change tact? Wow. Ooh. You need that combination. Both. Mm. Yes. All right. So allow me to now present my submission. Okay. You might have heard of the proverb, too many cooks spoil the broth, yeah. right? This is because with each addition, the cook is mixing in a flavor that takes something away from the meal. Mm. This thus reducing its overall quality. Yeah. Now, why is this relevant? Because too many rallies have spoiled <laughs> William Ruto's voter base. Mm. Yeah. And this might explain why he has changed his campaign strategy these last few weeks. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Mm. Let me start at the very beginning. Okay. The law of diminishing returns. Mm. The law of diminishing returns states that in any production process, a point will be reached where adding one more unit of production while keeping the others constant will cause the overall output to decrease. 
put differently and applied to our situation, every rally or meeting that Ruto hosts is not yielding a positive return or increase in his share of his votes. Mm -hmm. Let us look at the numbers for a moment. Mm. Now, according to the Daily Nation, Ruta has visited the counties 140 times in the last what? six months. <laughs> yes, 140. Mm. This includes visiting Mount Kenya 36 times, visiting Western and Coast 22 times wow. each, and visiting the Rift Valley 21 oh, times. Mm -hmm. And what does he have to show for it? In January, he was leading in the polls, and now he is second, yeah. trailing behind Rilo Odinga, who has a four point lead. Mm -hmm. This is equivalent to 900,000 votes. Given that in 2013, President Kenyatta won with a margin of, by the largest estimates, 62,000 votes, mm -hmm. Ruto's goose is cooked. Mm. Ryla is in the lead despite the fact that he has only visited the counties 74 times in the last six months, mm -hmm. nearly half of that of Ruto. Mm. This is the law of diminishing returns in action. Mm -hmm. Every additional rally that Ruto hosts does more to draw votes away from him mm -hmm. than to him. Mm. And this is why he has switched strategy. Where before he con it was concentrated on building that base, now he needs to solidify his base and link it to him inextricably. Mm. And I believe that Ruto is using conspiracy theories to do just this. Mm -hmm. A conspiracy theory, or more precisely a grand conspiracy theory, mm. is a belief system that involves at its core the claim that a vastly powerful group is carrying out a deception against the public for their own nefarious ends. Mm. So. What is the grand conspiracy that Ruto is peddling? That everything President Kenyatta has done is only bad. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So much so that Ruto has promised to revert to 844 before quickly backtracking because <laughs> everyone disagreed with him. Yeah. The only question is why turn to conspiracies in the first place? Conspiracies have a unifying effect. They indoctrinate their believers into a closed belief system, one that has insulated itself from external refutation or even the need for internal consistency. Mm. This closed belief system will come in handy if Ruto loses the election. His base is already primed to believe that his defeat can only be the result of electoral rigging and fraud, and nothing can convince them otherwise. Mm. And we have seen the consequences of this kind of conspiratorial thinking. In the US on 6 January 2021, uh, Trump supporters indeed. stormed the US Capitol building in an attempt to force Congress yeah. to make him president because they believed in a conspiracy theory. Further back in history, an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory by the name of the Protocols of the Elders of Zion created the background of acceptance for the Holocaust. Mm. Now, if these are the consequences of conspiratorial thinking, then it is only fair to ask if this is what Ruto is hoping to achieve. Mm. Especially when one reads the adoption of this campaign technique with his pick of running mate, Regali Kashagwa, mm -hmm. student index 001 of the Moy School of Governance. Mm. Only 46 days until we find out. Wow, mm. wow. I love how both of you have sort of married that combination, strategy and politics, yes. the law of diminishing returns. Mm. And economics, uh, don't forget economics. And economics. Yes. Uh, however, today I'm going to go a bit left field. Okay. This Friday, I would like to address the Gemma Nation. Mm -hmm. But I do not want to speak to the entire Gemerian population. Mm. No, 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 no. Today I want to speak directly to the small pocket of Germans that have refused to see the truth. Mm -hmm. The ones who have chosen to stick to Ruto despite the glaring facts that reveal that they should have switched lanes kitambo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dear stubborn Gemerians, why have you chosen this path? <laughs> why do you choose to continue to support a hustler who we hear wants to use you mm. and dump you? We as troubled Kenyans are concerned. Yeah. Well, the only thing that can explain the condition of this pocket of Gemma supporters is to conclude that they are in a state of what is called belief perseverance. Tell us more. Now, belief perseverance refers to a state in which people refuse to change their mind even when faced with glaring facts that contradu contradict and mm -hmm. refute their beliefs. Mm -hmm. Think of the QAnon supporters in America, mm -hmm. okay? They believe in a conspiracy of people eating babies and leaders covering that up. Mm -hmm. yep. Despite the facts, if babies are being eaten, why are there no increase in baby kidnappings? Amen. I wonder. Amen. Anyways, this explains the Gemma condition mm. in my view. When Gemma is shown the facts, they shun them and blame the sender. But facts are facts. Mm. To some of these people, when you show them the corruption scandals linked to the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance, scandals like Kimwarer and Aror, scandals like the May scandal, and so on, they blink and say all people are corrupt. Mm -hmm. Really? 
when they are reminded of the history of Moy and the direct correlations between Moy and William Ruto, that, Mo, uh, that Ruto and Gashagwa are direct representations of the Moy state that Raila and Martha fought so hard to get rid of. Yes. They respond by saying, this time mm. it will be different. Mm -hmm. When these pocket of demons are reminded of 2007 and the ICC, mm -hmm. they chant kumi kumi mm -hmm. like the illicit brew. Mm -hmm. And when the Mutongoria, not the Muteti, tell them that they must stand behind a leader that they could follow, like Martha Karua, mm -hmm. instead of one they barely even know, like Kashagwa, they just shrug it off. Mm -hmm. So the question that remains is this. How do you address those who are in a state of belief perseverance? In our humble view, the most crucial thing to do is to instill doubt. Mm -hmm. Doubt is an important tool. Yeah. When an individual is faced with doubt, the house of cards that their beliefs were built on begins to crumble. Mm -hmm. The Martha effect was a great example of this. Her introduction brought doubt into the mind of Gemma voters, swinging a number of them to Azimio. Yep. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Azimio should continue to instill doubt into the minds of voters. Anyways, but overall, my peeps, <laughs> the train has left the station. It's taken a detour in Naivasha and is watching the rally. <laughs> and now, it is full steam ahead to the lake. Mm -hmm. You have just 45 or as I said, 46 <laughs> days <laughs> to hop on. Yeah. Okay? okay. <laughs> we have a three-part criteria that we use to judge the headlines. Yes. For you, we ask ourselves these three questions. Is the headline topical or speculative? Is it repetitive or groundbreaking? And finally, is it thoughtful or just plain lazy? I'll reread the headlines for you before we go through them um, quickly. The Daily Nation, Under Siege. The standard, what new IBC numbers reveal? The star, Raila Ruto, close ranks in IBC voters' role, row, And the People Daily, voter numbers signal tight race. So I can see there's a clear theme between mm. the, the, the first three headlines, mm. all related to IBC. Uh, Miss Pope, I believe you and 2M gave a very, very good... Um, discussion about the problems that IBC are going to face yes. and uh, it's a very worrying thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm inclined to support the Daily Nation. Yes. Under siege. Under yes. siege. Very mm. simple and I think everyone who reads the byline after that mm -hmm. knows exactly what they're talking Especially about. Especially with the accompanying image of Chebukati, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a very poignant message. Poignant yeah. message. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. So are we, are we in agreement? Daily yes. Nation. Ah, so uh, AX, could you do the duties of tossing the others? Oh, with pleasure. Goodbye. <laughs> So long. Yeah, our winning headline comes from the Daily Nation. Mm. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that like button. Mm -hmm. We're also on your TV screens. You'll find us on Pang, Free to Air, Go TV, and Star Times. Today, for this weekend, this rally weekend, mm -hmm. I'd like to leave you with a quote. And it says this Never underestimate the power of stupid people in large groups. Mm. For, that, for those people, I don't know who I'm talking about, <laughs> uh, but that's by George Carlin. Thank you so much. And we'll be here with you next week. Bye. Have a great weekend.